This is the fourth video of visiting communities where dams have been removed. In this video, we visit Colfax, Wisconsin, and interview Heath Benneke of the Wisconsin DNR. A survey of the area around what became the village of Colfax took place in 1852, sponsored by the Wisconsin Commission of Public Lands. From the surveyor's official field notes, 1832 to 1865, the town of Colfax had a variety of distinct plant communities, including oak savannas, white, burr, and black oak, true short grass prairies, the remnants still can be found in the township, cattail marshes, and on some sandy soils, white pine. In 1864, the first non-Native Americans established themselves on the confluence of the Red Cedar River and what came to be known as 18 Mile Creek. For the first 100 years, timber, sandstone, and agriculture supported the settlement dominated by Norwegian immigrants. The original dam built by the Simons in the late 1800s was destroyed in a flood in the 1930s. A replacement dam was built in the 1950s. This is the dam that the Wisconsin DNR, the village of Colfax, Trout Unlimited and others removed in 1998. The decision to remove the dam was the object of a referendum vote. Because the cost of repairing the dam was greater than removing the dam, the community voted to demolish the dam. There was an estimated 10 to 15 feet of settlement behind the dam, yielding up to 23,000 cubic yards of sediment. The project had an estimated cost of $750,000, including the sediment trap, stream reconstruction of $400,000, and dam removal. Today, the 18 Mile Creek is free flowing. Colfax is located eight miles north of the I-94 corridor. Colfax's motto is the friendliest little town in Wisconsin. Good afternoon. I'm Duke Welter with the Kinney CC, and we're here in Colfax, Wisconsin today to talk with Heath Benneke of the Wisconsin DNR about the 18 Mile Creek Dam Removal Project that took place here. Uh, what they were faced with, what uh, how the restoration went, and what they have in the time period since the uh, the dam was removed. Uh, Heath, could you tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to work on this project for the DNR? Sure. Um, I worked on this project back in uh, 1997 and 1998, uh, just out of college, and then I was basically charged with being the habitat restoration biologist. So basically once the dam was removed, it was my responsibility to basically come up with a restoration plan to basically restore the trout stream going through downtown Colfax. Before the dam was removed, what was uh, what was here? Pretty much it was an old mill pond um, that had sedimented in, so there was water depths of between like 6 and 12 inches. Um, didn't have much fishery value anymore. Um, it had a lot of uh, plants and weeds that were kind of unsightly in the summertime. It lost most of its reflective pool status, so the village at the time had a decision to make the dam was in need of repair, and they had to make a decision at that time whether to replace that structure or look at removing the structure and restoring the trout stream. That's kind of where our program came in to help with that effort. Mm -hmm. Did, did uh, well, did the, the village of Colfax end up uh, uh, footing the bill for the project? No, the interesting thing at the time is um, there was grants available to take out small dams in, in the state of Wisconsin. So the village actually obtained a small dam removal grant to take out that structure. So that cost was paid through through a state grant. And then on top of that, all the restoration work that was done in the through town um, state trout stamp dollars, as well as partner groups like the Trout Unlimited and some of the local conservation clubs help pay for the restoration work. So pretty much 100% of the project, for the most part, was paid for some type of grant source funding or actually public trout stamp dollars to help pay for the restoration work. Mm -hmm. And you had some volunteer help too? Yep, Trout Unlimited is very active up here when we did the project. Um, we put about uh, 50 structures in the stream. They're called uh, bank cover structures at the time which is very labor intensive. The group of from local trout and limited chapter helped with the installation of those structures. And then on top of that, they also did a lot of work days like seeding, mulching, raking, things like that, which is also very labor intensive. So we really appreciated their help 
being here when you kind of need all hands on deck for certain things on certain nights, they were very helpful in assisting with that project at the time. We appreciate that. I remember that summer spending a lot of nights out here uh, with the other folks from Trout Unlimited and, and putting in a lot of sweat equity. A lot of hot dogs and, and Diet Mountain Dews, yep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what, uh, so, so with the, the con completion of the, the restoration, what is Colfax left with? So right now they have a restored trout stream. It's almost been 23 years since the project's been done. So, and the stream has held up very nicely. Um, the habitat work we put in um, 23 years ago looks very good today. Um, it has a brick trout population in the stream now. Prior to dam removal, there was no trout in this section of river. Um, right now there's about a thousand brick trout per mile. Um, in the section of river with some quality sized fish, the potential to catch a larger than average sized brook trout in that 12, 13, maybe even 14 inch range, which is kind of unique to this part of the state. Mm -hmm. um, and on top of that, you know, the, the village also has a very nice park going through town. Um, the village mows lower into this section of the impoundment um, a couple times annually, so it's open for people to go fishing or they can go hiking, they can play frisbee, they can do hang out and have a picnic, whatever they want to do along the stream corridor. So they had an opportunity to do that and on the upper third of the impoundment they've kind of let it grow up a little bit naturally which is kind of nice too feels a little bit more wild up here and then uh but the stream has held up real nice um and we haven't had any damages really to the stream restoration work we did 23 years ago we don't anticipate having problems going forward in the future and uh, it's a really a nice amenity in the middle of town if you like to get outside and recreate mm -hmm. now right at the bottom of the of 18 mile creek uh, where the dam was. Uh, just below that, it flows into the Red Cedar River. And above above the restored area here, uh, 18 miles is a fairly, uh, fairly extensive uh, cold water stream, isn't it? Yep. What did uh, removing the dam uh, do uh, for the stream and, and how did it have an impact on 18 mile creek and the Red Cedar? Sure, a big thing is by taking the dam out, the dam creates a thermal barrier because it backs the water up and warms it up. So the first benefit you get is actually colder water temperatures, which are very critical for trout. Um, so we cooled the water temperature down by taking the dam out. Um, in addition to that, it provided fish passage from the Red Cedar into the 18 mile creek system. And we saw more diversity of fish species um, come in once the dam was removed, more native riverine fishes like your shiners and your uh, horny head chubs, creek chubs, dace, things like that, that weren't really here before that. And then also we saw the sculpin and brick lamprey and brick trout recolonize, which are the cold water fish. So kind of your, your kind of unique situation in Colfax where you have kind of both a cool water fish community and a cold water fish community kind of living together because you're so close to the Red Cedar River. But um, the biggest thing, you know, from the trout stream was those thermal conditions by taking the structure out itself. Um, the drop water temperature is low enough where we have a self-sustaining trout fishery through town. Before the dam was in, we didn't have brook trout in this section of the river. Sure. Now, as I remember it, this dam was about a 15-foot high dam, and it was fairly <laughs> filled in with sediment before it was uh, breached and removed. Uh, what did you do with all that sediment, and, and how was that managed? Yep, sediment manage, management's a big deal during the dam removal process. Um, at that time, what we did basically is we used excavators and we dredged out 7,000 cubic yards of sediment from the river before the dam was removed. So we kind of basically created a channel going throughout the old impoundment. And that material was basically hauled into the upland area and disposed of so it wasn't in the floodplain anymore. And then basically after the sediment was removed, um, we re-sloped the banks. So the banks would slough in the lower two thirds of the project area try and minimize sedimentation. The thing with dam removal is you never can eliminate sedimentation, but the goal is to try and minimize it as much as you possibly can. Um, but uh, we were able to do that. It worked very successful in this situation, but uh, each situation is a little bit unique too. You have to look at the site characteristics to see what might work best, but that's what we did in this situation. Mm -hmm. What time of year did you do that uh, soil management work? Was that was in the winter time when the ground was froze because when you like take dams out there it's, it's a couple of years before you can actually really work solidly i mean old impoundment it's very soggy it needs a chance to dry out um so in this circumstance we waited for the old ground to freeze in the winter so you could actually have the equipment on top of the surface to do the work so um, that work was done i'm thinking like february ish something like that and, and uh, would have been the probably winter of 20, 1998 i'm sorry mm -hmm. but uh yeah in the winter time when the ground was frozen you could move around mm -hmm. good and then, and then, as I recall, the 
the restoration uh, for and the installation of fish habitat along the corridor itself took place the following summer. Yep, it was in the summer of 1998. We started sometime right around middle of May, and we wrapped up right around a little after Labor Day. So it was pretty much the whole summer. Mm -hmm. But it was 3,200 feet of stream tub, which is a big chunk of, of stream tub to work on. Well, we used a lot of rock to basically stabilize the eroding stream banks, but then we basically sloped those banks back. Um, covered that stuff up with dirt and then seeded and mulched it. And right now, you wouldn't even know there's rock in the stream bank. It looks like a natural stream. Kind of mentioned before, we had some what we call them bank cover structures at the time we put in, but we also put in a whole bunch of grade control structures. It's like little plunge pools as you go down through the stream. What that does is kind of stabilizes things after the, the dam is removed so you don't get a lot of active channel movement and things like that. Sure, and they also provide. Uh pools for winter cover for trout. Great right well. spot to catch a fish. Yep. I've heard rumors to that effect. A <laughs> couple of them there, yep. Okay. Well, that answers the questions that I had right off the top of my head, but I think that the story is uh, uh, an inspiration for a, a town like, like Colfax. Uh, I've, one of the things that I've noticed is that the high school, which is just across the street, uh, has science teachers who come down every single year and monitor that stream and keep track of the insects and crustaceans and other critters that are living in there. So that it has, it has become a community asset in that regard. Yeah, basically that's your outdoor, outdoor classroom right here in downtown Colfax. That is right. Uh, well, thank you for your time this afternoon, Heath. That's very, been very helpful. Uh, is there anything else that, that you'd like to add that we haven't covered that you think would be important and helpful for our folks? over in River Falls. I think the, the biggest thing might be is like just um, be patient with the process um, and then um, you know we've done a lot of these there's been a lot done in the state of Wisconsin um, and everything takes time but in the end um, they look really nice when they're done so just be patient in the process and let it play out and hopefully when you're all done you'll be happy with the outcome. So. Thank you. Yes. Thank you.